this morning, uh, let's open uh, to uh, Revelation chapter 3, but we'll only spend a very brief moment there as we look at Bible commentary. about what we're seeing in Revelation chapter 3 and uh, verse 6. And we're just kind of camped here right now. Uh, Jesus, to the church, really to all of his local New Testament churches, is giving this uh, important instruction he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto, you see it? Unto you, child of God, you, believer, uh, the churches. So uh, Jesus wants us to hear, but not just hear. Uh, but uh, to hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Now, uh, let's look at some commentary, Matthew chapter 7. So if you would, please find your way there to uh, yeah, Matthew chapter number 7. I, uh, I, and I am so excited about the message this evening at 6 p.m., um, and I hope that uh, <clears throat> God is your helper. You'll find your way back here uh, tonight for God's word then. Uh, but I'm also excited about what the Lord has for us right here and right now. Matthew chapter 7. And so the emphasis, the spotlight is uh, being trained upon hearing and so in Matthew chapter 7, if you drop down to, uh, to verse number 24, and, um, and, you know, the Lord willing, and I, I hope we can get through verse number 29, but uh, not a long passage. Uh, again, these words of Jesus, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings, of mine. And the implication of that statement is the will of the listener is a very real factor. And Jesus knows that some are not going to hear his sayings, but, uh, but therefore whosoever heareth Whosoever is willing, whosoever is available, whosoever has prepared their heart for the word of God, and I hope you prepared your heart before ever arriving. Quick review, last Sunday morning, can anyone recall the importance and, and why we should prepare our heart before we ever arrive? Does anybody recall? Boy, and, and Jesus comes right out and tells us and plainly states that when we assemble together around the word of God, uh, we're not the only one who has assembled. We're not the only one. Uh, and uh, Jesus, of course, has promised his presence um, and uh, yes, Jesus uh, plainly states that as soon as the word of God goes forth and, and enters into the heart of, of the listener, immediately the enemy will work to take the word of God out of, to take the word of God away from uh, the hearer, the listener. The enemy knows uh, the effect and the power of the word of God. 
The enemy knows where faith comes from. Do you know where faith comes from? Can you cite me a, a Bible reference uh, and, and, uh, and help me to understand where does faith come from? Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and all that appertains to him. Faith cometh by what? Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. And so, uh, you know, we enter into a battlefield. We enter into a spiritual war zone. Look, uh, one of the greatest mistakes you can make is to arrive at the assembly of the local New Testament church unprepared. Uh, by the way, uh, um, do you know the num one of the number one reasons cited by people who used to attend church, but now who no longer will attend church, do you know the number one reason cited by those individuals? They used to be, they used to come to church, they used to be involved, they used to serve, they used to work, but you won't find their shadow darkening the doorway anymore. Do you know the reason that they say? Well, there's hypocrisy, and that is, that is, uh, 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 per a survey, uh, a major factor. But somebody, someone, somehow, some way, while they were at church, they got, they got hurt. They got hurt. I mean, who ever anticipates getting hurt by someone, somehow, some way, when you come to the local New Testament church of Jesus Christ? Well, this is a place of love, amen? Uh, it's a place that Jesus has promised to attend. Amen? And, uh, but among the foremost reasons for why a child of God has made the decision to no longer attend church, no longer be involved, to just kind of stay out there by their lonesome, is because there was a day that they got hurt. Have you ever heard the term church hurt? Have you ever heard it phrased that way, church hurt? That's, uh, yeah. You know, so long before you arrive here, you should arrive here, amen? You should arrive here long before you ever get to the assembly of the local New Testament church. This is, this is the real battlefield, the real battle zone. Uh, yes, in fact, uh, and um, it, we've got some folks here that, and so uh, would you mark your Matthew reference uh, there, in, you know, Bible ribbon, however you mark your place, but let me, let, let's go back momentarily to the Gospel of Luke. You need to see this. Um, <sighs> in uh, Luke chapter 8. So, and uh, it's so important that you see this. So, just, uh, okay. Huh. Wow. Let me, I'm going to show you something. <laughs> I'm going to show you not, uh, uh, not only in the, in the New Testament, I'm going to show you the reality of this spiritual warfare from the Old Testament as well. And so, um, but uh, let's, uh, let's, let's go ahead and revisit in the Gospel of Luke. It is so real, it's so, it's so profound, uh, uh, Luke chapter 8, and then uh, verse number 11. Uh, now the uh, parable is this, and so here uh, God is giving us... Uh, He's giving us an eternal truth. 
using illustrating that truth with an with an earthly illustration so uh, the seed is the word of god uh, those by the wayside are they that hear right he that heareth my word and that's the admonition to the church in revelation god wants us to hear his word uh, so uh, then cometh who comes? And mind you, and mind you, there, there's no, there's no interval, there's no no, no interlude. There's there's no, there's no recess. It, I mean, it's just, you know, it's just uh, uh, you hear the word of God, then cometh the devil. And for what purpose does he come? You say, oh well, he's. No, the devil wouldn't come here. Now, wait a minute. What did Jesus just teach us? Uh, you hear the word of God, and that's what I'm teaching is the word of God. Regardless of where you are, you hear the word of God, and who does Jesus say is coming? You see it? Uh, those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil and taketh away the what? Why does he come? What is he after? The word. <laughs> Out of their hearts. So they heard the word. And the word was situated where? In their hearts. Would you look at this? Spiritual warfare. <clears throat> the word found its way to their hearts. Minds. Thought process. Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts. And why does he do it? Jesus tells us. Lest they should believe and be saved. The devil is after souls. God is after souls. But the devil's after souls. God wants souls to be with him for all of eternity. God would that none should perish, but that all should come unto repentance. And the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. And faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And the devil, you know, it, it would make one think the devil knows, at least even if in a limited way, the word of God and how God works. So, I, I would encourage you, uh, well before you ever arrive on any Lord's Day or any midweek Bible study or any Bible preaching, Bible teaching service, I would encourage you uh, to uh, get the shield up so you can quench what? All the fiery darts of who? The wicked one. The devil, get the, you know, if you just casually stroll in here, assuming that it's just going to be a, you know, another pleasant, uh, wonderful Bible service, church service, <laughs> the fact is, and I say this in love, I mean, I'm trying to encourage you, I'm trying to help you, you know, uh, you are setting yourself up. You are leaving yourself wide open. Well, this battle is real, you know. Um, wow, look at that. What a powerful declaration uh, from God's word. Now, let me show you uh, Zechariah chapter 3, if you would, please. I just... I'm in awe at this 
reference from Zechariah chapter 3 and uh, this uh, Uh, Je Zechariah chapter 3 verse number 1 <clears throat> and he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and who else is uh, who else is standing right there? And th these events are around the temple of God, the house of God, which is God's house of prayer. It's where God's people of the Old Testament assembled to do as you are doing here today. Do you really want to walk into this kind of a battlefield without first having met, getting up? You know, this is my counsel to you. Don't sleep in. Get up. Get into the Word. Get on your knees. Get your armor on before you ever get here. Because look who attends the services. Yes, Jesus attends. But look who else attends. Yes, Satan standing at his right hand. Now, the Bible even tells us Satan's purpose in attending the service is to do what, class? To resist. See, the spiritual warfare God wants those precious souls saved. God wants those marriages with uh, his power, his blessing. Uh, God wants those children uh, protected, hedged, and protected. Uh, and Satan is working against all of that. God wants to bless that local New Testament church that is uh, preaching the gospel, uh, engaged in the great commission of Jesus Christ. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, do you ever stop and think and wonder why, even though you know God wants you to do something, or you know God doesn't want you to do something, why you're having such a, a battle in doing what you know God wants you to do, or God wants you to stop doing something because it's going to be to your demise. It's going to cause you great harm and injury. And, and well, the enemy is resisting. And you're caught between. You're right in the thick of it. And so, uh, just such an incredible passage there in the Word of God. So, now uh, let's so kind of bring every catch everybody up, um, and we're just so glad God has made it possible for all of us to be here. And don't forget to thank God for the air conditioning. Amen. I tell you what, uh, going 18 months without the air conditioning, and uh, laboring where it was uh, about 93, 94 degrees. Uh, I'm telling you. I will thank the Lord for the rest of my life for air conditioning. Amen. Praise God. Uh, God is good. And uh, oh, he's so good to us. Now, uh, back to Matthew chapter 7. Jesus, therefore, whosoever heareth. Those who are willing to receive, to let in. God's word, these sayings of mine. Um, now, as it concerns hearing, now we're, uh, 
We're going to be looking at some Bible, and uh, so mark your place here in Matthew, but uh, as it concerns hearing God's word, uh, and doeth them, and doeth them, hearing and doing, James chapter 1, James chapter 1, there's a couple of verses I want you to see. The Bible is its own best commentary. Uh, James chapter 1 and verse 22. And so, uh, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Look at that, deceiving your own selves. And then if you would drop down to verse 25. Uh, uh, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Are you after God's blessing? Do you desire God's blessing? Do you need God's blessing? Do you want God's blessing? You're going to have to move beyond being a hearer and become both a hearer and a doer. And uh, God promises his blessing uh, to those who hear and do the word of God. Now, we'll go back to Matthew chapter 7. We're going to be going back and forth here. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Uh, go to 2 Timothy chapter 3, if you would, please. Uh, it's all about the word of God, hearing the word of God, but not just hearing the word of God, uh, Living out, living out God's word. Second Timothy chapter 3 and uh, just two verses, uh, 16 and 17. All oh, the significance of the Holy Bible, of, of the scriptures. Uh, what are we dealing with here? Well, look at verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Inspiration means God breathed. God breathed. This is straight from the heart of God to the church, to the child of God. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is what class? It's profitable. It will profit you. It will benefit you. It will help you. It's for you because God loves you. Yeah. Be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. God gives you his word and so that you can live a victorious life that glorifies God. And so it, profitable for doctrine. Doctrine is, is, is the basis upon which we build our lives. Uh, the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ for reproof. It examines, the word of God examines us, reproves us. God's word will find us out. Are we, are we sincere? Are we real? Or are we faking? Reproof for correction. Correction. Uh, to get us back on course, to get us back in line with God's will for our life. 
you know, if, you, if you're off course, it doesn't seem like a big deal at the onset of going off course, but if you stay off of course for very long, you'll be way out of God's will. For instruction in righteousness. Verse 17, that the man of God, and including women of God, may be perfect, spiritually mature, and really Christ-like, thoroughly furnished, Unto all good works, good works, works God will bless, works that God will use, words, works that God will reward, uh, works that glorify God instead of living a wasted, empty, meaningless life. God's word will do all of this for us that we may live a life that God will bless, that will glorify our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ instead of a vain life that is wasted. God's word will do all of this for the child of God. What kind of a life do you want to live? Uh, Matthew chapter 7, uh, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Wow. Well, let's see what God has to say about that statement. Isaiah chapter 28. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 28. Just one verse there. A wise man who builds his house, his life upon a rock. And thank you for praying for all who teach or preach God's word in Gateway Baptist Church. Do you understand we have somebody next to us resisting. And thank you for praying for those who teach and preach God's word. Uh, we're in a battle. Uh, look at this in, uh, in a, a Matthew chapter, or pardon me, Isaiah chapter 28. And uh, we'll drop down to verse number 16. Look at this, if you would, please. Uh, uh, building your house, your life upon a rock. I mean, uh, therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a what? A stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure what? A sure foundation. Now, who uh, do you suppose the prophet is being inspired by God to write about? None other than Jesus Christ. Uh, that he, he that believeth shall not make haste. Uh, California, what, what was it, last month, two months? I, I'm such a blur. Multi-million dollar homes built on sandy slopes in the foothills of California sliding off the mountain. Anybody else hear, see? Some of you nodding your heads. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine vesting your life, pouring your life, Everything you've got to build this magnificent, beautiful house. And then one day, everything 
starts sliding down the slopes of those mountains upon which you build because they weren't solid rock. Oops! We built everything on sandy slopes. Total loss. Total loss. No sure foundation there. Huh. Um, you know, I, I hope all of that will drive people to Jesus, the solid rock. I mean, um, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, then if you would, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and uh, try to move along, keep it going here, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Uh, by the way, how many go-rounds do you get? One life to live will soon be past, and only what's done for Christ will last. It's not like you get another go-round. Huh. I mean, what are you building your life on? What, what are you plugged into? What is your life all about? What does your life revolve around? What, what are you living for? I mean, does it really matter? Yeah, it really matters. Now, look at this in 1 Corinthians 3, 11. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Christ is that rock. 1 Timothy, if you would, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 19. I mean, uh, all right, here we go. First Timothy chapter three and uh, verse number. Uh, uh, pardon me, I said First Timothy six and verse nineteen. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. A good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. Wow. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 6. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 6. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be, and what's that next word class, please? You know what it means? <sighs> means everything. The word confounded, you go to the Greek language, the definition, it means to be defeated by the enemy. Praise God. Praise God. If your life is being built on the solid rock, you will not be defeated by the enemy. Uh, the liar, the destroyer, the murderer, the thief, the deceiver. I mean, I mean, do you know of anybody that enjoys being defeated? Do you know of anybody that purposes and plans on being defeated? Do you know of anybody that wants to be defeated? Do you know of people that would much rather be victorious? Victorious in their church, victorious in their marriage, victorious in their family, victorious in their profession, in their witness for Christ? 
the foundation. The foundation which ensures victory is Jesus Christ. May God help us. It's the difference between victory or defeat. Matthew 7, please. Matthew 7. I've got a couple of more minutes. Matthew 7. And uh, so let's build to be victorious. <clears throat> and uh, let's stay situated on the sure foundation, on that solid rock. Uh, and uh, let's, uh, let's uh, meet with God in his word and uh, with God in prayer. And let's meet with God in his church. And, uh, and let's uh, purpose uh, to be in God's will and God's plan for our lives. Let's walk with God. Uh, notice uh, Jesus then goes on to say, And uh, the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew. Now, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute here. Did, did I miss something? Now, hold on. Uh, this is the person which built his house upon a rock, upon Jesus Christ. Well, understand from the teaching of Christ, yes, that's the sure foundation. But that does not exempt the child of God from the storms of life. I want you to see that. Uh, you know, someone said that when a man or a woman uh, believes in Jesus Christ, accepts uh, the Lord Jesus Christ as their own personal Savior, uh, now the enemy's really mad. He can't take you to hell because you're in Christ. You're saved. You're forgiven. Your sins are cleansed. You're, you're on your way to heaven. But what the enemy will work to do is to ruin and wreck and destroy your life. <laughs> Look at that, verse 25. The rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house. The storms are going to come, but because this person is building his or her life on Jesus Christ, it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Look at that. It was founded upon a rock. Have you been through some storms? Well, there's more to come. But God brought you through those storms. He'll bring you safely through the storms that are still yet to come. Stay on the solid rock. Father in heaven, Lord, uh, we're, we're just scratching the surface. Uh, I mean... Uh, let him that heareth, Jesus said to the church, and uh, Lord, it, it's the difference between victory or defeat. Hearing, but not just hearing, doing the word of God. Lord, help us. Uh, we, battle, we battle our own self-will. We battle the flesh. We battle the many voices of the world. We battle uh, the enemy himself. Resisting. Working against. Lord, help us. Uh, Lord, uh, to not only be hearers of your word, but doers. And you've promised a blessing. Uh, for those who will be doers of the word and not hearers only. Lord, help us, we pray, day into day. Um, and we'll thank you and praise you. 
Bless now, I pray the service just ahead, for it's in Jesus' name we ask, amen.